In this lesson, we'll be talking all about setting expectations for your subscribers. In other words, how are you framing up front the engagement that they'll be interacting with to optimize it for the user experience? One of the first tips I have is explicitly asking the user to subscribe. Now, technically, users have already subscribed once they click the Get Started button if they're messaging you organically, or once they double opt in from a comment acquisition tool or a Facebook ad. However, even though Facebook doesn't require an explicit opt-in in, say, the welcome message or the first couple blocks, I would highly recommend it just so that you filter out who's motivated versus who's not. At the end of the day, you don't want to be desperate and spamming people with messages if they don't want to receive them. And this is a great way to set up that audience. So let's start in the welcome message or the first couple blocks. It doesn't really matter. And we'll simply ask the user, hey, first name, would you like to subscribe? Pretty simple. We'll add quick replies saying either yes or no to suggest those responses. Let's tag that choice with an attribute called subscribed and we are good to go. Great. So we've simply asked the user up front if they'd like to subscribe. Depending on what they say, we can then filter them out in the people tab, for example, delete any unqualified and unmotivated users, and even cut our costs that way if desired. The next tip that I have is you don't want to pretend to be a human. A bot is a bot, and you want to be upfront and clear to users about that, that it's a robot. It has predefined responses. It's not going to be able to respond to anything under the sun like a human might be able to. And I'll show you one great example of that, which is Lego's chatbot. So if I start the bot here, you'll see that it'll introduce itself with this Lego bot persona here. His name's Ralph. So this is perfect because it's using this cartoon type character to frame the conversation to basically say, hey, I'm a robot, this is an automated experience, so don't try to ask me questions that I won't understand, right? Ultimately, if users go down that route, it's just wasting their time and prolonging a conversation and prolonging an eventual conversion, in this case, getting a product recommendation. Another key piece to mention here is exactly what Lego did in this bot as well, which is something called disabling the composer. And this relates to the best practice of not over relying on the AI of your bot, which I'll talk more about in a second. So what Lego did here is if you see, I can try to type in a message here, but it won't actually let me. I cannot type in a message to this bot using my keyboard. Instead, I'm forced to interact with the buttons and menus here. And that's actually a really good strategy that Lego used because their bot is very linear. It has one purpose, which is to recommend a product. There's no need for me to ask any questions or type in anything on my keyboard, such as an email. The downside of this, unfortunately, is that if the user needs to type in something like their address, for example, they can't do that. There is a workaround using something called a web view where basically you can embed HTML content into the bot and create pop-ups and forms and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to keep the experience simple, I probably wouldn't recommend disabling the composer just because it is limiting. But if you would like to go that route, I'll show you how you can do that in ChatFuel. You'd go into the Configure tab here, scroll down under the Persistent Menu module, and disable this Allow User Input slider. Now users will only be able to go through the flow, the automated experience that you have created. Of course, you can also add a main menu here in the persistent menu linking to different menu items or functionalities of the bot, such as bookings, reservations, etc. The other key piece to mention here, in addition to not over relying on AI, is remembering live chat, right? So I would highly recommend that in the persistent menu here, as discussed previously, you include some sort of live chat option, whether it says live chat, talk to a human, etc. And as long as you have this composer enabled, users will then be able to interact with a human agent, even if the bot doesn't understand what they're saying, which is key, I believe. So to do that, you could add an option here that says talk to a human, you link that to a live chat block, let's say. I'll double click that, add a live chat plugin on it. And basically at that point, we are good to go. So as a recap, the key expectations to set are one, 
that you want the user to explicitly subscribe up front. You don't want to pretend to be a human. Tell them basically that you are a robot or this is an automated experience, but also give that human touch through live chat and don't rely on AI. Instead, rely on buttons and menus to guide the user through the experience.